complete kinematics so first of all we have classification of flow first is steady flow steady flow is that flow in which the fluid property does not change with respect to time so all the partial derivative with respect to time must equal to zero property remain constant with respect to time exactly opposite is your unsteady flow so in this flow the fluid property does continuously changes with respect to time so derivative with respect to time of any property is not equal to zero so with respect to time we have steady and unsteady then with respect to coordinate system we have uniform and non-uniform so in uniform case the property does not changes with respect to space coordinate x y z so i am representing x y z as s so any property with respect to space remain constant is called as uniform flow opposite is non-uniform in which the fluid property does changes with respect to space coordinate and therefore the derivative with respect to space coordinate x y z is not equal to zero then we have further classification is rotational flow rotational flow is that flow in which the fluid particle rotate about the own axis as well as above a certain point in that case the curl del cross v bar should not be equal to zero and then we have a rotational flow a rotational flow is that flow in which del cross v must equal to zero so for steady incompressible flow we have divergence equal to zero and for unsteady flow divergence is not equal to zero then we have source or sink then we have further classification is laminar and turbulent so this classification is based on reynolds number reynolds number is given as density multiplied, multiplied by characteristic length lc divided by by mu where lc is equal to l for external flow and is measured parallel to the flow lc is equal to four times cross section area upon weighted perimeter use this formula for internal flow p is called as weighted perimeter Reynolds number less than 2300 your flow is laminar otherwise turbulent for internal flow and for external flow critical Reynolds number is 5 into 10 to the power 5 then we define the streamline is an imaginary line if a tangent is drawn to line then it will give the velocity at that point so tangent drawn to it at any point will give the flow velocity of a fluid particle at that instant the equation of streamline is obtained as dx by u dy by v dz by w where u v w are the components of velocity along x y z direction this equation is for three dimensional and the first two terms we can use for two dimensional that is dx and dy the streamlines never intersect each other and form and form a stream tube the flow perpendicular to streamline is not possible then we have another term called as path line it is defined as the path followed by successive particles as they can cross the path lines can cross each other then we have one more term called as streak line it is defined as the locus of different fluid particles originated from a common point at the same time only for steady flow only for steady flow the path line streamline and streak lines are identical lines streamline streak line and path lines are identical for steady flow we have a three dimensional continuity equation is given as del rho by del t del del x of rho u plus del del y of rho v plus del del z of rho w equal to zero so we get del rho by del t and in vector form we can write this as rho multiplied by del dot v bar equal to zero in this case rho may be the function of time and space if del rho by del t equal to zero the flow is called as steady flow and if rho is constant with respect to the space coordinates it is called as incompressible flow that is density is everywhere uniform so for steady incompressible flow the continuity equation becomes del dot v bar equal to zero that is divergence is zero so for steady incompressible flow divergence del dot v bar equals to zero that is del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z equal to zero if you satisfy this equation then the flow is possible in three dimensional this is generalized form of the continuity equation so if this equation is satisfied then the flow is possible the isolation vector for a fluid particle has three components namely ax ay az so acceleration vector is given as axi plus ayj plus azk and acceleration ax is given as du 
by dt and in this case u is a function of x y z for non uniform flow and is a function of t for unsteady so we are taking generalized case and the coordinate of x y z does changes with respect to time also so we can write the ax equals to du by dt using a chain rule we have del u by del x second term is del x by del t is u plus del u by del y del y by del t is v del u by del z into del z by del t is w and the last term is del u by del t now using the same technique you can develop the equation for ay so instead of u you can replace as v and you can write the same sequence so almost same sequence will repeat so we have two parts of acceleration out of this del u by del t is called as local or temporal acceleration and this derivative is only possible when u is a function of time so it is only possible for unsteady flow and the first three quantity will exist for non uniform flow it is called as convective component of acceleration and it exists only for non uniform flow for uniform flow all this quantity will be equal to zero and for steady flow del u by del t is also equal to zero then we have two types of acceleration one is called as tangential acceleration is due to increase in velocity and second type of acceleration is normal acceleration it is due to change in direction of a velocity and the shear strain rate gamma dot that is derivative of gamma with respect to time is 1 by 2 del v by del x plus del u by del y your rotational vector omega bar is given as omega xi plus omega yj plus omega zk and you can find out this vector from curl so curl is given by del cross v bar and the curl is always equals to 2 times omega bar vector from this you can find out omega x omega y omega z even the condition for rotational and irrotational flow normally for two dimensional flow rotation takes place about the z axis omega z is given as 1 by 2 del v by del x minus del u by del y if your flow is irrotational then omega z will be 0 in that case del v by del x is same as del u by del y so you write this first and then differentiate in a cross fashion you will get your answer and then multiplied by 1 by 2 that is how you can quickly remember it or these are basically the cauchy riemann equations the product of del cross v bar is also called as vorticity then we have one more term if we know the vorticity we can calculate circulation so circulation is given by double integral of vorticity that is del cross v bar multiplied by area da which is perpendicular to vorticity